Okay, thank you for that nice introduction. I'm glad you did research on North Dakota. <laughs> uh, my name is Rochelle, and I know many of you here today. Thanks for coming out. And today we're going to talk about my hometown, home state of North Dakota. So I called today's talk Growing Up in the Great Plains. The Great Plains is the central area of North Dakota where I'm from. So to start out, actually, I want to show you a video just of what my area of the USA looks like. Uh, so let's watch. Um, and the U.S. is so diverse, like there are all different parts, and 
I really wanted to show what life is like in this part of the country, because I think on TV, we only see big city life. New York, LA, Las Vegas, big cities, which are nothing like where I'm from. So I really want to show the US and its diversity. So let's continue. So North Dakota is two South Koreas in Las Vegas. So imagine that, <laughs> two South Koreas. Yeah, there's South Korea one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But it only has half the population of Guangzhou. Two South Koreas, half the population of Guangzhou. So Guangzhou is about 1.4 million people. North Dakota, two South Koreas, about 700,000 people. So you can imagine that everyone has a lot of space. So that's why when you saw the video, you really didn't see any buildings, any houses. There's a lot of space. So do you know these places? Yes. OK, what's this place? Mount Rushmore. Yeah, Mount Rushmore. And do you know this place? No. Maybe less famous, Crazy Horse. Uh, it's uh, Native American. They're still working on this. It probably will never finish in my lifetime. They want to make this man on a horse out of the rock. So I think it will take a very long time. Um, are these in North Dakota? What do you think? South Dakota, yes. So many people ask me, oh, North Dakota, is that where Mount Rushmore is? No. <laughs> we have no famous landmarks, I think, um, but we have the movie. <laughs> so I always get asked, is it where Mount Rushmore is? No. Oh, is it like the movie, Fargo? Have you heard of the movie Fargo? Yes. Uh, it was a movie done by the Coen brothers maybe 10 years ago? Maybe longer? I'm not sure. Um, so it's this, I've actually never seen it. I think it's like a, yeah. it's a murder mystery. Um, this man chops up a body thing. Um, but in the movie, they kind of portray Fargo, North Dakotans, as kind of backwoodsy, uh, weird, strange, people with very thick accents. So I always get asked, is North Dakota like the movie? And you see the snow, and you see the accents. So maybe just a little bit, but um, <laughs> I don't think I talk like the people in the movie Fargo, even though Fargo is my hometown. Um, but you know, when I go back now, I do hear it sometimes. So do you guys know North Dakota accent? No? Yeah, so maybe yeah, you betcha is really common. Uh, oofta. So if I'm lifting something heavy, I'm like, oofta. Like this. <laughs> Maybe only North Dakota, Minnesota say this. We have really heavy O's. Um, so if I'm from North Dakota, I would really emphasize long vowels, long O's. Um, we also apparently say don't you know a lot, which I tend to catch myself doing. Um, and then we pronounce some things different, like roof for roof, and root for root, and bag for bag. So we have some differences. And about, like about. So maybe the Koreans can't quite catch the subtle differences, but I think a lot of for, or, uh, native speakers can probably hear. OK. So a little bit like the movie, but not much. And my third question always, how cold is it? <clears throat> it's cold. That's a fact. <laughs> Temperatures range from negative 51 degrees Celsius in the winter to 49 degrees Celsius in the summer. So actually, North Dakota has the third uh, biggest range out of all U.S. states, which I just found out. I didn't know that. Um, because the mountains are far away, the ocean is far away, so I think it really allows for these great differences in temperature. So negative 51 is very cold. Um, have you ever experienced this? Yeah, we got some Manitobans here, North Dakota over here. Yeah, so it's cold, it's dangerous. You're recommended to not go outside for more than five minutes at a time. But do they cancel school when it's this cold? 
No, no, we, we don't cancel school for cold weather. Um, however, there are blizzards and tornadoes and floods, so sometimes we cancel school for blizzards um, if it's really bad blizzard conditions. Um, I recently was living in Washington, D.C., where there was a blizzard, I'll give them that, but they canceled school, closed the streets for about a week. And I was just thinking, this is nothing. So growing up in North Dakota, I can handle strong weather. Um, this picture here is a city that flooded. Uh, floods are a big problem in North Dakota, and up into Manitoba, I think, too, um, because of all the snowfall and urbanization along the rivers. So we have a lot of flood problems. So let's learn some history about North Dakota. American Indians were the first people to occupy the Great Plains in general. Um, they were semi-nomadic people, um, hunted the buffalo, so they were the first people to occupy the land. And then Lewis and Clark. Have you heard about Lewis and Clark? Lewis and Clark are two American explorers. They're originally from the East Coast. They were sent in 1804 to explore west explore all of the USA uh, to find the Pacific Ocean, find a trade route to Asia, kind of conquer the land, take it from the Native Americans, say this is US property like this. So they went on a two-year expedition, 1804 to 1806, and spent a winter in North Dakota. So for North Dakota, we are very important people, because we don't have many famous people from our state. So we have schools and many buildings named after Lewis and Clark. And Sakakalia is our other famous woman, strong woman. She was a, an American Indian who lived in the center of North Dakota now. And she helped Lewis and Clark on their journey west. <coughs> so Lewis and Clark had run into some trouble with the local native population. There was some fighting. So Sakakawea kind of tamed the situation and led them west. So she's really important to North Dakota, and she's on the US dollar coin, which is here. Um, maybe you've never seen it because Americans don't like to use coins for dollars. We use bills. But we're proud to have her on the dollar coin. So how did North Dakota start to get people? So the US had the Homestead Act of 1862. And this took a lot of new Americans uh, were arriving in the USA around this time and later, and they needed a place to live, and the US government needed people to kind of take the land and do something with it. So the Homestead Act, you can see here, uh, use undeveloped federal land west of the Mississippi River, work the land for at least five years, Homestead is 160 acres, which is about 0.65 square kilometers, so a good chunk of land. And there were 1.6 million homesteads were granted between 1862 and 1935. And these homesteads are 10% of all land in the US. Uh, for North Dakotans, I think most, if not all, people can trace their origins to this. Um, my family, Everyone grew up on a farm. Uh, maybe my parents' generation or my grandparents' generation. So we're very closely related to the land, the farm, and these homesteads still are in the family. Um, my family just celebrated its 100 year anniversary of their homestead. So kind of exciting. You, the US is a very new country, so 100 years feels like a long time. So. Who came to the U.S., uh, to North Dakota? Um, European settlers. So originally, French traders lived in the North Dakota area, the Great Plains in general, although there weren't many of them. And that might have been French Canada at that time. Uh, but soon came in around 1870, Norwegians and Icelandics. And they were the first immigrants to go to North Dakota and Manitoba in Canada. So they often lived in these sod houses here, um, which is interesting. They just showed up and built their house out of the land, 
and started farming. Um, so originally Norwegians and Icelandics, and then came the Germans, which is my nationality background. Uh, Germans came in 1900, Germans and German Russians. So a lot of North Dakota is occupied by Germans who are living in Russia, and then they came over to the US. So there's kind of a distinction between German-Russian and German. And actually, my family is, 50% of me is German, but I've also got some other parts that make me up. Czech, Czech from Czechoslovakia, Austria, England, Ireland, and Scotch-Canadian. So most Americans are this hodgepodge of many different things. Uh, but in North Dakota, most people are 50% German or 50% Norwegian. And it's interesting, I don't meet a lot of people who are both. So I'm 50% German, I have no Norwegian. My husband is 50% Norwegian, he has no German in him. Uh, now people are mixing more, I don't know why they weren't before, but it's really rare to meet someone who's both. Okay. So this is just an interesting map, actually, of American immigration patterns. Um, this is what Americans claim to have as their ancestry. So the blue, the light blue that you can see all over the USA, is German. So I didn't realize how much the Germans settled the USA. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. And then you can see, this is Fargo, my hometown, right about here. The green here is Norwegian. So the Norwegians live mainly up along the Canadian border and along the Minnesota and North Dakota border. Um, yeah, and you can see big populations in the U.S. Like this is African American down here, maybe some Italian and French and English over here. But you can see the Great Plains are largely German. So the USA, <laughs> you've heard of the melting pot. Um, I think, from my experience, this is a very accurate term from where I'm from. Everyone kind of mixing, but it's tended to be Europeans. So I would say it's a European melting pot. Um, that's changing now today, but the USA is all these different people, and I don't know if in other parts of the country people know where they come from or really trace their family roots, but in North Dakota, I think a lot of people can tell you where they come from, um, what country in Europe. But we're kind of this mix. This is the melting pot that is the USA. It's one of the things I really value about being American, actually. This coming together of different cultures and nationalities. Oh, sorry, I was gonna mention. Um, so, I've been talking a lot about Germans, Norwegians, Icelandics. Um, North Dakota is a very uh, homogeneous looking state. Uh, that means everyone kind of looks the same. Um, everyone has, not everyone, but most people have white skin and blonde or brown hair, blue or brown eyes. Everyone's very white. And then we have a large Native American population. Um, but actually, I just went home this past summer, and I was surprised to find how diverse it's become. I haven't lived there in about five years. And just walking around, I saw a lot of people from Somalia and the Middle East. And actually, now there are a lot of Koreans. In Fargo, the biggest city, there is a Korean grocery store which is pretty exciting. Uh, Fargo is only about 100,000 people, so pretty small. Um, but Korea has come and they've kind of showed their culture to the area. So now we can go get kimchi and whatever Korean groceries we need. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. Okay, so what's for dinner in North Dakota? Typical, typical North Dakota food. Um, this here. Meat, potatoes, and a vegetable. So we call it meat and potatoes. Um, what do we eat generally? Meat and potatoes. And that probably comes from our German roots. Um, ancestry, I think. Uh, potatoes are really important to us in North Dakota. Everyone loves mashed potatoes um, and meat. So I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat. My family cannot understand what I eat. Um, <laughs> potatoes, you can't eat meat. Uh, so 
soy. It's changing now. We have a lot more ethnic food. Um, we still don't have a Korean restaurant, but we have a lot of Mexican food. And yeah, very, Asian food is kind of coming in, so it's becoming more eclectic. But traditionally, meat and potatoes. And then here I'll show you this here is called lutefisk. Lutefisk is a Norwegian fish. Or, it's not a Norwegian, it's a white fish. It comes from Norway. Um, it reminds me actually of Hongo. Like, you know how it kind of like burns and smells really bad? That's this. <laughs> Norwegians eat this on holidays and special occasions. So, it's kind of an important link to the past. And the other Norwegian food up here is this. This is lepsa. Lepsa is made from potato. Uh, it's just kind of like a bread. So these are two very traditional Norwegian foods uh, that North Dakotans eat. And then if you are German-Russian, you eat this. This is nekla soup, which is a soup made from like kind of potato dumplings. Um, so you can see potato, potato, potato. Potatoes are very important. Um, but nekla soup comes from kind of the German Russians. And then we have this down here. This is called hot dish. So Americans might not know the term hot dish, uh, or Canadians, or any of you. Hot dish is casserole. So casserole is like a hot food that's many things put together. For example, um, there is a tuna noodle hot dish. It's tuna, noodles, cheese, broccoli, and cream, and put it in the oven, and it comes out, and that's your meal, full meal. We have the same thing, but we've changed the name to hot dish. Okay, so let's look at North Dakota today. Um, like Hyun said, North Dakota has a very strong economy. It actually, you know the USA and the world is not doing so well uh, with the employment, but North Dakota has the highest employment rate. So I think it's only 3.7% of people don't have jobs. Um, these jobs, though, are more in oil and industry, kind of coal, uh, a lot of farms, and technology is starting to come in, like in factories. Um, so I think we're still losing a lot of educated college students. They're kind of leaving the state. There's still not that much opportunity. But we have a lot of people moving to the U.S. who need to do these kind of labor jobs. So North Dakota is doing well with its economy. We also have good and cheap universities. So I went to the University of North Dakota, which I think was a good school. Um, I'm happy with my education. It only cost me $6,000 uh, a year, so times four. $6,000 a year, which in the US is extremely cheap. Um, most state schools are probably around $10,000 uh, a year, a year. But yeah, University of North Dakota only 6000 a year. And good, good place to go. Um, so there's a good university in Fargo, and the University of North Dakota where I went is north, and in the <coughs> capital there's a good university, so we have that going for us. Uh, food stuff. We make a lot of food, uh, especially soybeans. And let's see, I actually made a list. Soybeans and sunflower seeds. All kinds of seeds, canola, um, flax, these kind of things. So we're feeding America. So we're doing well. <laughs> we're also fueling America. There are a lot of oil fields in western North Dakota. And coal. There's a lot of lignite coal, which is really dirty coal, but North Dakota uses it, so they get money from that. One thing that's really nice about North Dakota is this space. So we have so much space. Everyone has a big house with a big yard and a big car. And that's doable because we have the space. It's not necessarily good, but it's doable. Um, and it's just nice. You can get out of the city and just be in nature. Um, Minnesota, the neighboring state, is really nice. There are many lakes so people can get out and there's just space to enjoy not being in the city. So I would say that's North Dakota's best trait. Um, low crime rate, very low crime rate compared to other places in the U.S., probably just less people. 
And low cost of living. Um, people can buy really cheap houses, really nice, big houses, or cheap. So it's pretty nice. It's a good place to live if you're into that. So let's look at North Dakota. I've talked a lot about Fargo, because that's where I'm from. So I'll show you. Fargo is here. And this is the Canadian border. And the geographical center of North America is probably about here. So in North Dakota, a town called Rugby. Um, and this is the capital here. So I showed you a video in the beginning of this very flat land. That's probably this half of the state. Um, just very flat, like you saw in the video. And then as you go west, you get some hills and some buttes, which are not mountains, they're kind of like hard rock, clay hills. So I have a picture here to show you. That's very beautiful. This is about a seven or eight hour drive from my hometown. Um, and the speed limit is very fast. And the highway is straight and flat, so you can get there quickly. It still takes about seven or eight hours. Um, and that's North Dakota. So I didn't grow up with this. Um, this is maybe the less populated side of the state. Most people live in Fargo, where I'm from. But North Dakota is very beautiful. And I guess we'll end it there. Um, thank you for listening. This place that nobody knows about. And now maybe you can spread the word. <laughs> North Dakota exists. I've met a North Dakotan. Actually, in this room, there are three North Dakotans. Raise your hand. Wow. Yeah, we're a good group. <laughs> Thank you.